Television, radios, and mobile phones are all functioning as communication technologies, thanks to radio waves, which are a type of electromagnetic radiation. When a device receives radio waves, it then transforms it into mechanical vibrations in the speaker in order to create sound waves. Probably one of the most controversial subjects regarding communication technologies and how their development influences the human life is the mobile phone. And this is due to the newest and, as many have described it, the worst aspect of technological evolution, 5G. Once mobile communication technologies were introduced, there were a number of significant worrying comments as to how real the potential health risks are associated with the use of mobile phones and living near base stations. The new 5G network that the ultimate trend in mobile phone technologies are using creates radio frequency electromagnetic fields that are needed in order to transmit information. While advertised as a tool to make our lives much easier, History shows that the use of EMFs, electromagnetic frequencies, has led to numerous dubious effects during the Cold War, when Russians basically bombarded the United States Embassy with non-ionizing microwave radiation. For a total of 40 hours a week, frequencies starting from 2.5 GHz and going up to 4.0 GHz were aimed at the American Embassy and the consequences were several times detailed in current research. According to very popular reports from the Lilienfeld study and the Moscow signal, it seems that even though the radiation intensity was 500 times less than the United States standard for occupational exposure, the embassy was still beamed with twice the highest limit allowed by the Soviet standard. The effects on the people working at the U.S. Embassy were depression, irritability, concentration problems, memory loss, ear, skin, and vascular problems, along with other health issues, according to Dr. Paul Dart, MD, who studied the health effects of smart meters. The 5G network we are all about to welcome into our lives uses the same range of 2.5 to 4 gigahertz as the one beamed by the Soviets. When the CIA was in charge with investigating whether there were significant changes to the nervous system once exposed to such electromagnetic frequencies, their results showed how the Soviets attempted to achieve mind control by using a low-level radiation. This was found in the Foreign Policy magazine, which also mentioned that, wanting to understand what was actually going on, the US did not tip off the Soviets that they were aware of the irradiation. So this led to the daily exposure to radiation of the diplomats, who were also kept in the dark. The secret project of DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Projects, known as Project Pandora, went deeper into researching how behavior could be impacted by exposure to microwaves, yet no relevant biological health impacts were made official. This secrecy led to a significant number of staff dealing with serious health issues. And the consequences did not avoid high officials because three of the American ambassadors to Moscow died of cancer. Two of them died before 1976, and the third died of leukemia in 1986. So this was DARPA Program Plan 562, which is better known by its code name, Project Pandora, the exploration of the behavioral effects of microwaves and one of the most dubious episodes that the history of Cold War science went through. What the Soviets used in Moscow were microwaves and radio frequencies that a 1971 study carried out by the Naval Medical Research Institute documented as leading to a number of biological impacts such as cataract lesions, burns at the site of surgical implants, such as pins, liver enlargement, poor fertility in men, alterations in fetal development, significant impacts on the nervous system, like headaches, insomnia, restlessness, cranial nerve disorder, seizures and convulsions, psychophysiological disorders, such as depression, anxiety, a general feeling of lousiness, dizziness, fatigue, irritability, chest pain, memory loss, and tremors a number of other health issues related to biochemical, metabolic, gastrointestinal, 
and endocrine gland factors were also found. The carcinogenic effects of such waves and frequencies were detailed by Dr. Neil Cherry, a New Zealand environmental specialist. It seems that the embassy staff dealt with brain tumors, leukemia, and reproductive organ cancer. This is seen as a trigger effect of low-level chronic microwave exposure, which highly influences the increases in illness and mortality in organs across the entire human body. Also, there is noticeable widespread damage of cellular chromosomes. Even though all these studies along with others clearly showed the at least dubious effects of prolonged exposure to microwaves, officials could only conclude that no adverse health effects of the radiation were shown among the embassy staff members. And this position is still held on to, even nowadays, despite what research shows. It is still officially believed that microwave technology, like cell towers and phones, is safe, even though time has shown significantly more evidence of the dangers that EMFs actually have. This new wireless revolution, which is the 5G, is thought to provide access to a planet-wide wireless system that will successfully go past 4G, its predecessor, in terms of how fast and more energy efficient this new network is announced to be. So, is it safe enough to be brought along in everyday human life? Some magazines would say that yes, it is. However, researchers disagree. Dr. Ben Ishai, member of the Hebrew University Department of Physics, explained in more detail this phenomenon during the 2017 Environmental Health Trust Forum. He came up front with evidence that the 5G technology will interact with the human skin and the sweat glands, and that it will seriously affect oxygen metabolism. The skin is absorbing, and the main, if you like, motivator of that absorption would be the sweat duct. And this is all before we'd even realize that these industry standards were gonna come out for 5G. Now, there is a problem at around about 550 gigahertz, strong absorption line from oxygen. He went further, claiming that there is much more research on human health effects that must be done before this new wireless technology is implemented. According to him, this is a mandatory step to take before anything, because this is how both the public and the environment are protected. The same opinion is shared by the president of the Environmental Health Trust, Dr. Deborah Davis, who believes that this is all part of an uncontrolled experiment aiming to impact the human population. She adds that as long as one looks out for a faster downloading of movies and games, there is no opposition in volunteering one's living body to such a global experiment. So there are still questions that need an answer. As a society, should we agree with investing hundreds of billions of dollars in deploying 5G? Should we agree with the installation of 800,000 or more new cell antenna sites throughout the United States, close to households, workplaces, or play spaces? Since approximately 250 scientists and medical doctors signed the 5G appeal that requires an immediate moratorium on deploying this new network, and that more research must be done before installing it, you be the judge of whether this technology is working for us or against us.